Man, this is going to be pretty sweet. Playing Tovalar. Finally get to play Werewolves again. So, why did you ever stop playing that Werewolves deck anyway? That's actually a good question. I don't really remember. I feel like there was some reason, though. Alright. Uh, I'm not going to cast any spells. Let's transform these into big boys. Mm-hmm. Cool, the old transformation routine. Yeah, yeah. Nope. One mana, three, two right there. Your turn. Alright. Alright. Not. I could cast. Uh, got enough to cast a couple spells. There's a carrier throw, and. Uh, Second spell, because you know I know that's how your deck plays, right? It's a bloodthorn vampire. On your turn. All right, my nope. turn. No, nope. hang on. Well, cast two spells. Cast two spells. I. I, I can't. I, I thought you like when people cast two spells because nope. you get to. I don't you know, like that. I don't like that very much. Oh. Oh, I see. Oh, you don't like... Oh, okay. I, I thought some... Can I go? Yes, your turn. Thank you. Yep. Play a Woodland Cemetery. And then... I will tap three for the Abomination of Llanowar, and that'll be my turn. Hmm. That's it? That's it? Easy. <sighs> no attacks. And no spells. Just gonna flip them. That's true. Back into werewolves, I see. Back into werewolves, man. I guess we kind of want to keep them as werewolves, right? I, I, I would like that, yes. I'd like to keep them as werewolves. And uh, how does one keep them as werewolves? By you not casting two spells. Alright. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> Land there. Alright, so for my spell, my one spell, actually my first spell, <laughs> Now here's my second spell. I've got enough for a spawning pit. Are there you, we go. Are you serious? And a turn. My turn? <sighs> no, not, no, it's not no. your turn yet. It's, it's, wait. This is end step still. It is. It's gonna be your turn in a second. Your turn. Thank you. Play a swamp. Two, three, play a shaman of the pack, and I will pass my turn. Gets it. Gets he it. doesn't get it. <laughs> Look at that. <sighs> Alright, if I don't cast a spell, do you promise to cast less than two spells? I promise you'll be happy with my turn. Oh, that is real ambiguous, but, uh. No spells. I'm gonna pass the turn. Just flip these again. Yeah. The last time. So you said it before. I didn't say that before. I'm saying it now. Got a promise here. All right. All right. Ooh. Got enough for two spells here. Enough for two spells. Oh my God. First spell, I'll go and chant to Vampire with Murder Investigation. <laughs> I'll save this for later. I'll end my turn. Thank you. All right, I can start my turn? Yeah, yeah, you can. This is incredible. All right. Yeah. Pay two for Incubation Druid. Cool. And then and I will pay one for the Sentinel. There we go. Yeah. Ooh. Well, if you still want to play werewolves after that cautionary tale, I want to welcome you to the Uncommon Commander. My name is Ryan, and I'm glad to have you here. I'm very happy presenting to you a Werewolf Tribal deck today. My first standard legal 60-card deck was a Werewolf Tribal deck featuring four Emerwolves, four Mayor of Avabrux, 
four moon mists, and four fogs. It was real good at killing people on the crackback. I loved that deck, but I eventually stopped playing 60 card formats and then MTG altogether for a while. That deck's been sitting on a shelf getting dusty for so long I'd almost forgotten about it. That is, until now. I get to rekindle my love along with my frustration at having to flip cards constantly because WotC has finally given us a true werewolf tribal commander, Tovalar, Dire Overlord. This big dog costs one and a gruel to cast, and proving that gruel isn't just a crappy soup, paying this gives us a legendary werewolf human with a 3-3 body. It also has some abilities. First up, whenever a wolf or a werewolf you control deals combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. It also has, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more wolves and or werewolves, it becomes knight. Transform any number of human werewolves you control. That's pretty sweet because it works with both the new werewolves and the old ones. When it's transformed, the dire overlord becomes the midnight scourge, is no longer a human, and has a 4-4 body. It retains its awesome ability to draw cards, but it also gains an ability to pay X, red, and a green to pump a target werewolf or wolf that you control by plus X plus zero until the end of the turn. That creature also gains trample for that time. Now you may have noticed the daybound and nightbound keyword abilities on Tovalar's two different sides. Day and night are mechanic in this return to Innistrad, and creatures with day and nightbound abilities are stuck on their daybound side during the day and nightbound side during the night. That's just something that's good to know, especially since it'll interact with some of our cards in our 99. In this deck, we're running about 30 werewolves, including our commander. 10 of them use this mechanic. So let's talk about our game plan with this deck. I'm sure you won't be surprised to learn that this deck plays a lot of werewolves. That said, we're also leaning hard into giving our creatures the flash ability. In order to get ahead in a werewolf deck and avoid what happened to me in the intro video, you don't want to be casting more than one card per turn, so it's very important to cast a single creature during each of your opponent's turns. This will get you ahead on tempo and let you cast human werewolves as combat tricks. If you want to play a speedy red and green stompy deck that plays a little bit like a blue deck, then this is the one for you. As always, this is my personal take on this commander, and you probably know some great cards that I don't have in here. Feel free to use today's list as inspiration for your own. What an absolute waste of $226.39 if you're buying it from TCG Player. And if you are, please consider buying through my TCG Player link in the video description. I also have a small Patreon if you'd like to support the creation of the videos that way instead, and the link can be found below. Finally, clicking the like and subscribe button is both free and super helpful to my channel. Thanks! Werewolves are kind of a monstrous race, so it makes sense that they're not allowed to live with the real humans. No, instead they have to survive in the forests and even on some mountains. 14 and 8 of them to be exact. The other lands these guys are allowed to inhabit are the ones on your screen. For color fixing we have Blighted Woodland, Command Tower, Game Trail, Moss Fire Valley, and Path of Ancestry. For utility we're running Castle Embereth, Ghost Quarter, Tectonic Edge, Scavenger Grounds, Moss Warp Bridge, Spine Rock Knoll, Tyrite Sanctum, Kessig Wolf Run for redundancy, and the somehow not legendary Skarg the Rage Pits. Alright, we've got a 3 mana commander so ramping him out isn't the easiest thing to do, but that's kind of a good thing as it means he's cheap and we'll get him out early. Our primary land ramp is going to come from this set of 9 cards. Edge of Autumn, Rampant Growth, Sakura Tribe Elder, Dire Strain Rampage, Hazaret's Monument, Ronus' Monument, and the Werewolves, Scorned Villager, which becomes Moonscarred Werewolf, Ulvenwald Captive, which becomes Ulvenwald Abomination, and Conduit of Storms, which becomes Conduit of, Emra of Emrakul. I always want to say Emrakul, but people don't like that. We are also running a bomb in this ramp section, and that card is Zendikar Resurgent, which doubles our mana. Now obviously this doubles his card draw, so whether we're casting Werewolves or dealing damage with them, we're going to be drawing cards. Since we have to deal some combat damage, it's not a bad idea to make our werewolves extra big and evasive. To this end, I'm running these cards. Kessig Naturalist, which becomes Lord of the Elvenwald, Mayor of Averbrook, which becomes Hallpack Alpha, Neckbreak Rider, which becomes Neckbreaker, Hound Tamer, which becomes Untamed Pup, Curran Outlaw, which becomes Terror of Curran Pass, Instigator Gang, which becomes Wild Blood Pack, and Arlen, Voice of the Pack. 
Arlen is kind of the odd one out here, as she isn't a werewolf first of all, and she also doesn't give an anthem or evasion. But I'm kind of counting those counters she gives out as a soft anthem effect. The wolf tokens are pretty nice too. Now we need a certain amount of werewolves in this deck if we're going to really make it a werewolf tribal deck. But you know, not everything always fits into a nice category, and these are werewolf cards that don't. Reckless Waif, which becomes Merciless Predator, Village Messenger, which becomes Moonrise Intruder, Wolf Bitten Captive, which becomes Crowl and Horde Killer, Gatstaff Shepherd, which becomes Gatstaff Howler, and Fangblade Brigand, which becomes Fangblade Eviscerator. I've put an emphasis on cheap and evasive werewolves here since we need them to deal combat damage in order to draw cards. So we've got werewolves on the board, but we really want to avoid this scenario that I found myself in in the intro video today. To this end, we're running these four werewolves, Hermit of the Natter Knolls, Huntmaster of the Fells, Mundranan Shaman, and Ulrich of the Crawlin Horde. When flipped into werewolves, these become Lone Wolf of the Natter Knolls, Ravager of the Fells, Tovalar's Mage Hunter, and Ulrich, Uncontested Alpha, although it seems to me like Tovalar contested it and won, so there's that. These do help keep our werewolves as werewolves by punishing our opponents for flipping them, or for casting spells. If you don't love the Hermit slash Lone Wolf of the Natter Knolls because it's a very specialized ability, consider the non-werewolf Rurik Thrar instead. In spite of our anti-spell cards, there will still be times where we need to simply not cast anything on our own turn in order to flip our werewolves. But we don't want to be inactive, so to help speed things up with our deck, we're running a lot of haste and flash cards. The ones that give our creatures haste are Reckless Stormseeker, which becomes Storm Charged Slasher, Arlen Cord, who becomes Arlen Embraced by the Moon, and Village Watch, which becomes Village Reavers. Our flash enablers are Vivian, Champion of the Wilds, Arlen the Pax Hope, which becomes Arlen the Moon's Fury, and Yeva, Nature's Herald. These flash enablers allow us to cast a single creature during each opponent's turn without triggering a transformation back to human. Instead of casting just one werewolf for turn cycle, we get to cast four. That is so powerful that if there were more mono green werewolves, I'd just make a Yeva Nature's Herald werewolf deck. One card that I would like to note here is Arlen the Pax Hope. Her front side is the side that gives our creatures flash, but her Moon's Fury side is interesting too. It's a pretty good mana dork, but its plus zero is a really unique ability. It turns her into an indestructible creature. Now you may be thinking, that isn't really that unique, Ryan, there's like five versions of Gideon that do that already. But to that I would say, no, this is different. Gideon is still a planeswalker when he becomes a creature, and so when he's dealt damage, he still loses his loyalty counters. Arlen is not a planeswalker anymore, so she retains her loyalty. Man's best friend, loyal to the end. Alright, so we've figured out how to cast things when it's not our turn, which will allow us to not cast things on our turn, and still get value. But what if we still want to cast things on our turn occasionally? I mean, it'd be nice to be able to sling spells when you're supposed to sling spells. Well, feel free to cast those spells because with this set of cards, we control the moon. These are Gaia Reach Bandit, which becomes Vilden Pack Alpha, and the Celestis. Vilden Pack Alpha won't, however, work with daybound creatures. You can try to transform them, but they're daybound because it's the day, so they don't flip. That said, the Celestis only works with daybound creatures, so there's that. As you can see, Wizards really divided this tribe with the day and night mechanic. Still, we're going to make the best of that. Because of this, we're running about 20 of the old werewolves and 10 with the new mechanic, including our commander. This will allow us to still take great advantage of the old werewolf cards, and it allowed me to handpick some of the best new werewolf cards and their support cards. Now that we've finished with our tricks, it's time to worry about protecting ourselves. To protect our face when we swing out with all of our werewolves, we have the fog effects, Blessed Respite, Winds of Calcisma, and Obscuring Haze. Those last two are one-sided, so if our opponents attack into a werewolf army, we can protect our big dogs while we lay waste to their most valuable pieces. Blessed Respite isn't one-sided, but it can serve you as protection against a mill deck, and it can also act as graveyard hate against an opponent's deck. To protect our team, we have Shaper's Sanctuary, which isn't really hard protection, but instead disincentivizes our opponents from using targeted removal on our stuff, Full Moon's Rise, Blinding Fog, which gives our team hexproof but is also another fog effect, and Cauldron of Souls. Cauldron of Souls has really awesome synergy with Arlen, Voice of the Pack. 
I mean, really good. Another way to protect ourselves is to remove troublesome cards from the table, or prevent them from getting onto the table in the first place. Our removal for artifact and enchantment cards are Cinder Vines, Masked Vandal, which is both a human and a werewolf thanks to Changeling, Outland Liberator, which becomes Frenzied Trap Breaker, and Afflicted Deserter, which becomes Werewolf Ransacker. Our creature removal comes from Moonlight Hunt, Daybreak Ranger, which becomes Nightfall Predator, and Tovalar's Huntmaster, which becomes Tovalar's Pack Leader. And our lone counter spell is Tybalt's Trickery. And the final way to protect ourselves is through card advantage. Tovalar does a good job of drawing cards when we have a board state. In fact, he's really almost all the card draw you need if you have a full board state. The issue with him is that when he doesn't have a board state to work with, his card draw ability is kinda terrible. So we're gonna build around that problem to really round out our deck. Our card advantage comes from Duskwatch Recruiter, which becomes Kralin Horde Howler, Werewolf Pack Leader, Lamholt Elder, which becomes Silver Pelt Werewolf, Foster, Raider Good, Ulvenwald Observer, Berserker's Onslaught, Rage Reflection, and if all else fails, Reap. You may note that Berserker's Onslaught and Rage Reflection don't actually draw us cards. That's true, but Tovalar does, and these double our card draw with him. Most of these give us their card advantage when our creatures are either not transformed, or are dying, or are dead. This means that if someone casts Wrath of God, we can draw a ton of cards from our creatures dying, which will fuel us to a new board very quickly. Some people build their decks to be sticky, with hard to remove creatures, or wide protection spells. This deck though? This deck is the comeback kid. The underdog? Alright everyone, you've hung in there with me through 95 cards in this deck, and I think that deserves a reward. And that reward is... hanging in there for 5 more cards! In a segment that I like to call... The Final Countdown! Today's Final Countdown is going to simply feature my favorite cards from the deck. A couple of these cards are here because they've helped me blow people out in the past with my 60 card deck, and others are here because I think they'll help me blow people out in the future with this new EDH deck. At number 5 we have probably the least effective of the bunch, but it's still a lot of fun. That card is Howl Pack Resurgence. This 3 mana enchantment gives each of your wolves and werewolves plus 1 plus 1 and trample, but the reason it makes it down this list is because it also has flash. Among combat tricks, it's not a huge buff, but it's often enough to turn the tide of a battle and though the surprise is gone, it sticks around for the rest of the battles to come. I think my favorite card from my old standard deck should come next, especially since we're in combat trick territory already. Number 4 is going to be the card that let me completely demolish my opponents and their armies alike. Moon Mist. This handy little 2 mana instant is a fog effect that prevents all combat damage, except damage dealt by werewolves and wolves. Better yet, it transforms all humans first. Bait your opponent into attacking you, slash and rend their creatures to the graveyard, and kill them on the crackback with your fully transformed werewolf army. So dirty. The only downside here is that the transformation totally doesn't work on a third of your werewolves, including your commander. Ah, stupid daybound. I think number 4 was my favorite from way back when, but if it wasn't, number 3 sure is. This card is the wolf creature that I wish was legendary. Immerwolf. This bad dog has Intimidate, other wolf and werewolf creatures you control get plus one plus one, and non-human werewolves you control can't transform. Yes, they're stuck as werewolves forever. And do you know what the absolute best part is? From what I've gathered, Immerwolf works even with nightbound creatures, preventing them from flipping to their daybound sides. Dang you Immerwolf, you magnificent pup. Now onward to number two. We've been able to cast creature spells as though they have flash, and really that's a pretty big part of our game plan. But we've also got some pretty interesting planeswalkers, enchantments, and sorceries. What if we could cast those at instant speed too? Well, do you have $35 sitting around? If so, you can! Thanks to Vidalcan Orrery, the card that made Game Knights famous. Now you can cast everything at instant speed, and you're almost guaranteed a big board, unless someone casts artifact removal. Who puts that stuff in their decks, right? But now we've seen 99 cards, so what we really need is just one more card in the deck. And since Flash is so powerful for our deck, it should have something to do with that. 
but we've already put Vidalkin Orrery at number two, so, I mean, what's more powerful for a Flash deck than that? Well, the answer to that is our number one card, Seedborn Muse. No need to save your mana up for the best possible moment. This Muse is going to make sure we have mana available every single turn, regardless of how impulsive our mana purchases have been. It's like a trust fund for baby wizards. No matter how fast you spend it right now, you're always going to have more later. Well, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I want to offer a special thanks to my patrons for helping make this video happen. The more financial support I get for doing these, the more I'm able to actually do them. And my patrons are big contributors to that. Now I'll shut up and let the credits roll. Oh yeah, thanks to Tolovar coming out, I finally get to play werewolves again. This is going to be sweet. So, why did you have to stop playing that werewolves deck anyway? That's a really good question. I, I don't really remember, but I feel like there was some reason.